Another visible light normal illumination technique is standard photography using a digital single lens reflex or DSLR camera. Our initial setup for DSLR photography included Canon 5D Mark II, a pro-level DSLR with a Canon 100mm macro lens mounted on a studio stand. A desk lamp was positioned at approximately 45 degrees where minimum scatter from the polish scratches and no glare was observed. A piece of black polyethylene foam with a hole cut from the center was placed around the lens to remove any reflections from the camera on the daguerreotype surface. There was some glare on the edge of the metal plate, but no reflections or glares disrupted the image on the surface. While this setup produced sufficient results, it may not be the most replicable of setups and lacks in technical prowess. As we worked on an enclosure for axial specular illumination to record the negative of the image, we considered this to be a better option for documenting the object with visible light and normal illumination. The blacked out enclosure named the Dag House was created to eliminate any reflections from a range of reflective or light producing objects found in a lab or studio, including but not limited to computers, tripods, stands, light fixtures, walls, tiles. DSLR photography, while it is high resolution, does not contain the detail of scanning or gigapixel imaging. The equipment costs are moderate depending on the cost of the DSLR and lens used. One of the biggest benefits of DSLR photography, including the DAG house setup, is that it can be used for multiple imaging techniques. I'm now going to show a short video providing additional information about the DAG house. The DAG house is an enclosure for imaging daguerreotypes created to eliminate any reflections from the range of reflective or light producing objects found in a lab or studio, which is a more affordable option to blacking out an entire room. The DAG house is built from black painted PVC pipe, joints, black velvet, and transloom universal mylar as a diffuser. The PVC pipe frame allows for the enclosure to be easily disassembled and stored while also providing an inexpensive building material that is accessible and easy to use. The beam splitter for axial specular illumination includes a piece of glass and a wooden platform with a notch cut into it for the glass to rest at a 45 degree angle. Two flashes are set up, one for axial specular illumination and the other off to the side for normal raking illumination. The DAG house setup can be used for multiple imaging techniques without the daguerreotype being moved or handled between. These techniques include visible light photography with normal illumination, visible light photography with raking illumination, high dynamic range imaging, and axial specular illumination to capture the negative of a daguerreotype image. This video is a time lapse showing the simple and quick assembly of the DAG house. Here's a graphic that illustrates the variety of imaging techniques that the DAG house can be used for. In addition to the standard DSLR photography, the DAG house can be used for high dynamic range imaging, or HDRI. HDRI is a computational imaging method that uses a series of exposures to create a single image that more accurately represents the wide dynamic range present. By processing several images representing a wide range of tonality, HDRI can even produce an image with a range beyond human vision. One of the limitations of digital imaging and film before it is the dynamic range that can be recorded in a single image. Dynamic range is an expression of the ability to discern gradation from darkest to lightest content in a view. A high dynamic range example would be a scene including a home interior and the view of a sunlit field through an open window. No single image can capture this range in one exposure, but a sequence can be processed to include the range. Through computational processing of several exposures, we can create an image with even more dynamic range than human vision. In fact, the dynamic range is often so great that it cannot be fully displayed on a computer monitor. For the final output, we select the most useful range for display. 
While somewhat subjective, the result is a hyperreal image with more information than any of the individual source in images. The image on the left is a normal exposure and the image on the right is an HDRI merge. As seen in this portrait of Clara, the image is very light in her cheeks, but very dark around her elbow and in her dress. HDR imaging allows for us to capture the detail in both the lightness of her face and in the black folds of her dress, presenting an image that closer represents that what we can see with our eyes when examining the original. The daghouse can also be used for standard raking illumination by simply lowering the side flash used for normal illumination in HDRI, seen here circled in yellow. This raking illumination image of Clara especially emphasizes the red pigments used to hand color the daguerreotype seen mostly in her cheeks and bow tie. As mentioned earlier, the complex image of the daguerreotype is a direct positive with a small viewing angle allowing the negative to appear at certain angles. In accurately and adequately documenting these photographic images, it is important to also record the negative using specular illumination, which can be done using the daghouse. Axial specular illumination allows for the capturing of the negative reflection without distortion of the object's geometry. A diffuse, even light source is positioned perpendicular to the image with a piece of glass angled at 45 degrees over the metal plate, directing the polarized light to the surface and then to the camera's sensor. Most of the supplies for the daghouse can be bought in a hardware store, with the exception of the glass. We used a borosilicate glass. By using a higher end glass that is smoother and more transparent, there is less worry for distortion, color shift, or other inaccuracies that could be attributed to lower end glass. Even diffuse illumination is also of importance to eliminate any hot spots. The image on the left shows the angled glass or the beam splitter for axial specular illumination setup. The image on the right is a composite image of Abe from the axial specular illumination and standard photography with normal illumination. Now having covered the imaging techniques using the daghouse, we will finish up the visible light imaging techniques with RTI and gigapixel imaging. Reflectance transformation imaging, or RTI, is a newer imaging technique that creates hyper-realistic digital surrogates that are interactively controlled by the viewer. This new method is based upon the synthesis of multiple digital images of a subject in a fixed position collected from a fixed camera position. Hewlett Packard Labs researcher Tom Malsbender invented RTI in 2001, taking the initial form of polynomial texture mapping, or PTM. This open source software has been adopted and developed by Cultural Heritage Imaging, CHI, and has found its niche with cultural heritage and natural history objects. The technique involves the capture of multiple images with the subject and camera position fixed and the light source varying. The series of images are lit from a point source of light, in this case a flash, that is at a constant radius from the subject, but relocated through a virtual hemisphere of positions, as seen in this animation of, this small, of a small RTI setup. The software processes the multiple images into a single file that derives all possible light positions within the virtual hemisphere of light. The final image looks like a 2D photograph, but is actually the documentation of the subject's surface interaction with light positions at the individual pixel level. By moving a mouse, the viewer can control the light direction, zoom in and out, and select data enhancement options that increase sharpness and contrast and even change surface properties. This video is walking through the process of viewing a daguerreotype using the RTI viewer. The green sphere in the top right corner represents the light position. The viewer can dynamically relight the object, changing the raking light view to best observe specific details. The view in this video is switching between the default view and the specular enhancement view. Within the specular enhancement view, the color component is removed and the surface of the object is converted to be more specular. The combination of the ability to dynamically relight the object and change the surface characteristics can increase the visibility of surface material and condition, including dust, brush strokes, and scratches.